Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide on this live Sunday edition, the 27th day of April 2014. I am your host, Alex Jones. And this will be another very important transmission, totally jam-packed with key intel. The Russia situation, as I've been saying the last few months, is deteriorating, and I said that they would probably try to partition the eastern half for Russia, the western half for uh, western-backed Ukraine. That may be a staged event at the highest levels between different arms of the global crime syndicate. Now, let's just say that that's what we hope's going on, because as bad as that is, that is nothing in comparison to if this is real. Now, again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. What I am is really a historian and a man who is uh, street smart. I'm a lay studier of history and how humans operate. And there are no fewer than 30 plus examples in the last 200 years in Eastern, Western, Southern Europe of powerful empires making backroom deals to act like they're fighting with each other, but to divide a country in two or three, four parts sometimes, more than four parts. So that's the standard play. One of the last famous examples was uh, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin made a deal right before World War II to act like that, well, Germany's coming to protect ethnic Germans uh, in uh, Poland and Russia's coming into its side to protect ethnic Russians in Poland. They'd made a backroom deal that came out at the end of World War II to divide the country between each other. That may be what this is. Unfortunately, my gut tells me it's not. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And let me expand on that. If this is not staged, we've gone from a 10% chance in my gut estimation last Friday, two days ago for nuclear war, to about a 20. We've got about a 40% chance, maybe 50. You're going to see armor from Ukraine openly fighting Russian armor and helicopters. In fact, it looks like it's already started. So I'm being very conservative here. Uh, I'm not a military analyst. Most military analysts are on the Pentagon payroll here or they're on KGB slash FSB payroll. If you see them on Russian television. So they're not going to tell you anything that, that resembles reality when you're watching military analysts on CNN or Fox. I am also a lay historian of military affairs, as you've noticed and uh, larger geopolitical machinations, and I've read the books of Brzezinski and many others. And I've interviewed a lot of top experts you've heard over the years, former generals, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, former top CIA analysts and others. So this is a realm I'm informed in. That doesn't mean I have all the answers. So I do want to open the phones up today to get your take uh, on the Ukraine situation, and we'll cover these headlines when we come back. Uh, then we've got an LA Times article. I remember... Three years ago, DrudgeReport.com, just giving credit where credit's due, linked to an article we did where the Texas uh, Utility Commission said that it would basically double Texas power prices if Obama shut down these Texas power plants. They did it. The power doubled. It's more than doubled where I live. I mean, it's incredible. I have trouble paying the bill. I, I can't imagine poor folks. Here's the LA Times. Talk about economic warfare. This is it. This is Agenda 21. U.S. electricity prices may be going up for good, set to double because of shutdown of coal power plants. That's your precious L.A. Times. When I broke this three years ago, the White House actually came out and responded to us, okay, and said we were liars. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. President Kennedy has been shot. Is that possible? He still has the gun. The gun is pointed at me right at this moment. Take a hold of this thumb and break it if you have to. themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. They took the babies out of the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Survivors of the USS Liberty are demanding a congressional investigation into what happened an acknowledgement that the Israeli Air Force bombed a U.S. intelligence Navy ship. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. The Taliban is taking responsibility for shooting down a U.S. helicopter. More than 30 people were killed, and there are reports this morning that most of them are U.S. Navy SEALs. There may be a false flag incident where some uh, ship goes down and you be used for the excuse to accelerate the next war. If there's one thing that has unified Democrats and Republicans and everybody in between, it's that we all hated the bank bailout. The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. It comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. You keep telling me to shut up, but I'm not going to do it because this isn't a game. It, we're live, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sunday, the 27th day of April 2014. I come to you from deep in the heart of Texas, Austin. And we are going to kick off the transmission with news so important, so off the chart incredible, so unbelievably dangerous that out of everything I've ever covered on air in 19 years, this is undoubtedly in the top five most important developments. And you'll notice most of the top stories the most important news I've ever covered in the last few years. In the past, I never really talked like that. But every few months now, earth-shaking events are taking place when you geopolitically, militarily, economically, culturally understand the context in which they are happening. I've never been to Russia. I don't have any Russian ancestors. I believe the Soviet Union was a great evil of collectivist socialism and communism and basically what the U.S. is adopting today. That said, uh, Russia is in a holding position collapsing, basically, trying to stabilize their plunging population growth levels that are negative. They have 1.2 Russians for every two people that die. And they are not offensively causing any problems. China is taking over the whole world, working with the globalists. And the banks that have hijacked the U.S. are actively involved in economic warfare against the American people and lobbying to break up our families, raise our taxes, disarm us, destroy our borders, and make the Constitution null and void and let the president operate as a dictator. That was all over mainstream headlines last week. The Republican Congress saying that Obama is abolishing the Constitution. Finally, the Republican House, not the Congress, uh, is telling the truth. That's the only hope we've got. So with that backdrop, 
Let me go over the headlines here dealing with Russia. First, before I get to the latest headlines, let me just show you Friday's headlines here. If you're a TV viewer, you can see this on Infowars.com forward slash show or PrisonPlanet.tv. Radio listeners can just search whatever I'm reading here and you'll find it. This is CNBC. Russia wants to start World War III, Ukrainian Prime Minister. This is Friday. Ukraine Foreign Minister ready to fight Russia, AP. Ukraine helicopter hit by grenade taking off. Bloomberg reports, Putin warns of consequences as Ukraine steps up offensive up to the Russian border. Kerry warns Russia of expensive new sanctions. S&P, Standard & Poor's, downgrades Russian government currency and bonds down uh, as a destabilization effort. Russia says it's an attack on them and will engage in economic scorched earth in Europe. That's the Wall Street Journal reporting on that. Now, continuing. What's the West doing? How traders can prepare for worsening Ukraine crisis. CNBC, how to make money off of it. So that's the uh, headlines there on that front. Now, let me give you the new headlines. and You can make of these what you want, and then I'll go over my take on this, why this is such a big deal. Here's a nice headline up on Infowars.com from the Project Syndicate publication. Top U.S. diplomat, U.S. has betrayed the new world order or the current plan for global governance. Let's move on to the next headline. Russia denies aircraft violated Ukrainian airspace, ABC. Satellite images reveal massing of 15,000 Ukrainian troops, hundreds of tanks, around the cities that they're invading on the border of Russia. They're in eastern Ukraine, Slavyansk and others. There's another one. This is out of Reuters. Ukraine rebels free Swedish hostages. Obama seeks unity against Russia. These are real headlines. Moving closer to war, Paul Craig Roberts, former head of Department of Policy at the Treasury, father of Reaganomics, breaks that down. Obama decries thugs in Ukraine Russia provocation. That's in uh, AP. Pro-Russian militants take over TV station in Ukraine's Donsk, Donetsk. Russian jets probe Ukrainian airspace again as tensions rise. Christian Science Monitor. Ukraine blames Moscow for human shield detentions in the east. Okay, so that's some of the headlines right there. I'm going to be very calm about this, but also very clear and deliberative for everybody. Does everybody know what happened in Ukraine? How this started three and a half months ago? Please forgive me if you're a longtime listener and you hear this constantly and know this. We have a lot of new listeners. People need to understand this because I have people come to me on the street saying, you know, Putin's evil, Russia's evil. Are you ready for war, Alex? Are you going to be a peacenik like you always are? I'm not a peacenik. If somebody actually attacks us, I think we should attack them with a full force. The State Department, and I've played this clip probably 10 times. I'm not going to play it again today. You can just search engine. Deputy Secretary of State says $5 billion spent in Ukraine. Color revolution. Or, or State Department spent $5 billion in Ukraine. That'll pull up the video of her a few months ago. Saying, quote... We spent $5 billion in Ukraine in the last few years to overthrow their government, their elected government. Now, if the country's half Russian, basically, been part of Russia off and on for hundreds of years, the East has always been part of Russia at any one time. The Russians have their pipelines and military bases there. And the West goes and arms a bunch of thugs to blow up police stations and bomb military bases and take over and calls them freedom fighters. And then now they're moving into the East, kicking people out 